Buonasera, buonasera. Welcome back. T. Walker here with another Walker Wine Session number four. Um, we're, we're rocking and rolling. Um, fresh out the bottle, a little Wheelie Gine. Pouring it for the first time on Valentine's Day, actually. Right out the gate with some beautiful kind of blood red, purple color. Hmm. Um, yeah, so Bouilly um they seem to make a, a slew of wines from multiple different DOs um, in Spain. Um, and those are kind of like appellations, uh, more or less. And we'll talk about that, I'm sure, in, in depth um, at some point in time. But this one comes from the Toro region, so northwest Spain, um, on the Duero River, which becomes the Duero River um, in Portugal, uh, where port is made. So just up upstream um, lies this area in northwest Spain. If you kept going, you'd go through like Ribera del Duero um, as well, which is another another big uh, wine uh, making and grape growing region. Um, the Buil and Gine, they're, they're Buil, um, 2014 Toro. Um, the grape variety is Tinta de Toro, which is a, a local clonal selection of Tempranillo. So, um, Tempranillo 100% with their own their own variety that's been growing there for, for quite some time. Um, it's a very ancient uh, wine growing region as far as we know. Um, back even, you know, 100 or 200 BC, um, they've been farming grapes there. And uh, I would say though it's made a, a resurgence in the last maybe 20, 20 or so years with a couple big name producers moving in, um, Vegas Cecilia and Numanthia, and they've made some, some really big wines as well as, as well as other producers. But, um, yeah, the last couple of decades, they've really started to, to blow up and, um, make really big, intense, um, high alcohol wines. Uh, but apparently, and I haven't had a lot of, uh, of Toro wines and, and, you know, and actually I haven't had, a that many Tempranillos in my, my time and span of drinking wine. Um, so I'm super excited today. This one comes in at 15% alcohol, so um, no no backing off on the throttle there. But uh, yeah, I, I think they're supposed to be through reading and through talking to people. I mean, Tempranillo is it's kind of like Nebbiolo maybe in a way to an extent where it's a kind of a balance of power and finesse. Um, you know, I think Tempranillo is certainly a darker, a darker wine, um, and grape, uh, but darker wine in the end than the Nebbiolo would be Barolo. But, um, anywho, yeah, super stoked about this wine. Uh, today's actually Valentine's day, so not in a super rush, but, um, here's the cork, a nice long cork, um, just in case there's some seepage or whatnot over time and you want to store it for a long time. Uh, but yeah, super, super pumped about this one. I haven't taken any notes, so everything's right out the gate. Um, I will be taking some notes later on, but I'm in a little bit of a, of a hurry, like I said. So uh, we're going to stick my nose in and give you some tasty notes, but also talk a little bit about the area and, um, and the winemaking style and such. Hmm. First initial nose, it's kind of dusty. Um, <coughs> Some like dried cherries. Um, almost like a cherry liqueur. Um, you definitely sense some of the alcohol. I mean, there's no doubt you could tell that it's from a, wine, uh, a warm grape growing region. Um, this area is is gets quite warm in, in the summer um, for a handful of months, uh, you know up to 100 degrees and more at times, uh, but also has those diurnal swings where, you know, hot hot daytime temps, cool nighttime temps. Um, this, the couple of the vineyards that they source uh, these grapes from, or in most of the whole AVA, is a little bit above 2,000, or DO, sorry, uh, not AVA, um, is above 2,000 feet. And um, 
so you have that altitude, which which definitely helps, and and warm growing regions for sure to to give you some night uh, cooler nighttime temps, which help to res- attain, retain acidity and uh, keep that freshness in in the wines. And so something like this that gets the big the big fruit, um, the big ripeness during the day with the with the warm weather, and then uh, and then cools off at night to retain the acidity. Um, the terroir and soil and such, it's, you know, it's just up from the Douro River, like I was talking about, and um, which is a major river in Spain, and uh, very, very dry area, and sandy soils, and very, very good drainage, and a lot of the areas have loads of, you know, good pebbles and stones, you know golf ball size and and bigger up to softball size um, of all shapes and sizes too. Um, So those, you know, certainly pay, uh, you know, do a lot to to express the the local terroir of of Toro. Mm, Definitely like a nice little mushroomy thing going on. Um, Seems to be getting a little darker, a little richer, uh, maybe a little soy sauce or something like that. Sorry, I'm scrunching up my glasses a little bit. Yeah, meaty. So yeah, I mean, 2014. So you know, we're in 2020. This is February right now that I'm uh, February 14th that I'm that I'm recording this, and uh, it's still holding on strong. And uh, I'm gonna give it my first sip. Mm. Mm. Yum, chewy. Oh man, all about the texture. Um, yeah, <laughs> I've actually got a steak going on tonight, so that'll be great with that. Um, great with this wine. Uh, so this wine is, you know, it doesn't have any kind of indication of if it's a, a crianza, so something that's younger, or a hoven, or a, you know, a reserve or something along those lines, but. I did read that it's got a couple years in barrel um, and then six months in bottle. So there's definitely, um, you know, I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of new oak influence by any means, but there's a little age on it. You can tell um, that's helped to really kind of round out the tannins um, and, and, and kind of rein them in for the bottling. Um, this has got some beautiful texture to it. If you like tannic wines, this is definitely a region I would say to go to. Um, you know, my first thought that it came to mind was something that's chewy, um, juicy. It's got the acidity, nothing that's out of balance. It's got big fruit, um, just on first taste. Um, definitely some herbaceousness there too. Um, some some herbal, maybe rosemary or something. Um, but yeah, to me, just first sip, um, and that's the first sip of wine of the day. So I don't like to judge any wines in the first sip, but a big one, this one, the first one's a big bruiser, and uh, and I'm digging it. Uh, I got I got a lucky, a lucky buy on this one. I went to a more eclectic wine shop um, to pick this one up, and um, you know it's it's kind of difficult. Well, it's not my normal mo to get something. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a huge sommelier's palate, meaning I don't like really high acid wines. Um, I usually tend to like things that are a little softer. So usually something that's coming from the new world and Spain kind of falls in this great area of being kind of new world and old world, but that it has this warmth, um, that you get, um, in the climate. So you get these full phenolically ripe wines, um, but also still has this enough elegance and finesse and, and kind of you know secondary and tertiary type of of components to them, uh, flavor profile and such to to really balance them out and make a complete picture of the wine. So I'm digging this one um, just on first sip. Uh, it came in for me at I believe 30 bucks on the dot. Um, so a little higher price point. Um, not your everyday drinker for most folks, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, so far so great. Molto, molto bene. Mm. Just amazing texture, amazing approach. Uh, 
hits you on the front, the mid palate, the finish. Uh, I think the mid palate is just loaded with fruit. Um, there's all sorts of stuff going on. I kind of want to let this sit to kind of let it open up and breathe a little bit um, to kind of display its full its full character. Uh, to see those things a little bit more clearly defined, uh, but beautiful wine, big richness, beautiful tannin. Um, I think this is one of those types of wines that you can pour for a lot of people and they'll enjoy it. You can pour this for the cab folks um, and they'll dig it. You know, a little bit more tannins than someone that drinks Pinot Noir might be used to, but I think they'd be even into it usually. Um, so yeah, I think definitely a, a wine that that hits a lot of profiles and um, really impressed. You know, I've, I've bought a handful of wines in the last few weeks to do these reviews and I, uh, I haven't even come close to striking out yet, so that's great. Um, and yeah, I wanna talk about all sorts of things. Um, the clock keeps ticking apparently at 11 minutes. Uh, I'd like to keep these videos, I guess, somewhere in between uh, 10 and 15 minutes long, although you know, certain ones might be shorter or longer, and I might kind of add, um, maybe do dual parts. I've got a, uh, someone that I really watch online and, and read their reviews, and they do a dual part segment, one about the wine, one about um, afterwards that follows up, and it's maybe something specific about the wine or, or an area or a type of aging or a process. So definitely want to throw some of that in the mix. Um, you know, I want to talk about more specifics into the varietals and their unique characteristics. Um, but yeah, Tempranillo, um, just a little short tidbit. I mean, grown obviously all over Spain and it's known by so many, and Portugal as well, but it's known by so many names um, on the German database. Um, they catalog a lot of her, you know, the world's grapevines. There was 87 synonyms for Tempranillo. Tinta de Toro being one of those. Um, the beautiful, you know, Tempranillo is this beautiful bluish type of grape. Um, I have never made that I can remember um, in the fermentation process, but apparently it has, especially young in the fermentation, has this gorgeous blue hue to the, to the fermenting uh, vessel. But as it ages, it loses that and picks up a little bit more of a reddish characteristic. Um, but yeah, digging the wine, I'd like to... Uh, you know, I wasn't sure how this is going to be holding up, that it's got five or six years in bottle, but um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to revisit this one tomorrow, if not even tonight maybe, and do a little segment. So I um, hope to wrap up with that and just let you know some, some second thoughts on the wine as it opens up, how it goes with food, and maybe a little bit more about Toro. So I bid you adieu. Thanks for tuning in. And Bouille uh, Gine. Good job, bravissimo. Uh, um, look forward till next time or segment number two. All right, ciao, ciao.